Okay, so I'm going to talk about some of my experiences using RethinkDB in production in a website called Sage Math Cloud, and uh, it's quite involved because um, it's a complicated website. So first, let me tell you a little bit in one slide about what Sage is. Uh, there's a software project called Sage Math. It's a large, a very very large open source mathematical software project. The mission of the project is to create a viable open source free alternative to Maple, Mathematica, MATLAB, and Magma. And it's been around since I started it in 2004. Uh, Sage Math Cloud is completely separate from Sage, the math software. Sage Math Cloud is a website which I launched in, to the, or web application, single page web application which I launched in 2013 and which uh, has been very actively developed since then. And the goal of Sage Math Cloud mainly is to make it extremely easy to use Sage However, as it turns out, uh, you can do a lot of other things inside of Sage Math Cloud. Um, you can edit LaTeX documents collaboratively. You can use IPython, Jupyter Notebooks collaboratively. We have good support for using R and uh, other things like that. It has a terminal. You can do, actually, all development of Sage Math Cloud happens inside of Sage Math Cloud. So you can do web development. But it's the, the core goal of Sage Math Cloud, for me at least, is make it so that if somebody would like to teach a course, which could be a course in a university or something else, and they want to use programming in some way, especially programming that involves mathematics, make that really, really easy. So in addition to these sort of features that you might care about, there's also course management functionality. So you can send a bunch of IPython notebooks out to students, they can use them, and then you can collect them. And it's used by universities like UCLA uses it for calculus. It's also used by companies um, in training people to use their libraries. Uh, it, the text stack, you can think of it as like real-time Google Docs, but much more aimed towards technical stuff like Markdown and Python and so on. Um, the text stack is RethinkDB, uh, Linux, of course, React, JS, Node.js. Um, it uses Sage a lot behind the scenes for all the mathematical stuff. And CodeMirror as an editor, which we use very, very heavily. And a lot of it's written in CoffeeScript. Um, as far as how... Uh, so. Um, I want to emphasize kind of the production use of RethinkDB and uh, telling you about this. And so RethinkDB is used very heavily as the main database for Sage Math Cloud. We're not using any other databases, just RethinkDB. All the data is stored there. And as far as usage, um, every day there's about a little over 4,000 distinct people that use Sage Math Cloud during the week. And often there'll be nearly 1,000 simultaneous users. So it is getting used pretty heavily. In fact, this morning when I woke up at about 8.30, the site started dying, and I had to uh, almost double the number of web server nodes. The uh, RethinkDB was doing fine, but the web servers were not, unfortunately. Uh, Rethink or, sorry, Sage Math Cloud, like RethinkDB, is entirely open source. It's uh, GPL licensed. Not AGPL, but GPL licensed. Okay, so um, now I'll tell you a little bit about how RethinkDB and Sage Math Cloud are related at a more technical level. So first, uh, here's, well first we switched from Cassandra, which is what I was using before for almost two years, to RethinkDB uh, near the beginning of the summer. And this was of course a non-trivial switch. I had to write, rewrite everything in the entire application that involved the database. And um, fortunately, Cassandra is somehow so limited in what it does as far as the options regarding queries that a lot of the time rewriting my code involved uh, taking 10 lines of code and replacing it by one single line of code against the RethinkDB API. And I'm not joking at all. You can look at the, like, the two files in the Git repo history, and it just, just shrinks dramatically. It's really shocking, um, as RethinkDB has a very expressive query language. Um, so here's the setup that we currently have as far as the size of what we're doing. There are six nodes on um, Google Compute Engine. Each has four cores. and um, we have a whole bunch of different tables with a total of about 5 million documents, and each table is um, replicated and sharded with a factor of three. So there are three copies of our data um, across these nodes, and also the data gets split into three pieces and shuffled out, um, and so on and so on. Uh, typically, so in the previous uh, demo about RethinkDB, he showed change feeds. So at any given moment in time, when you look at the number of change feeds that we're serving from RethinkDB, there's usually between five to 10,000. So that gives a sense of scale, and it works pretty well. Uh, and the way I'm doing backups, I tried using the kind of built-in one-shot backup command, but it turns out with the structure of my data, I have one big table that's kind of like a blob store, and it's just enormous. It's like 
70 gigabytes of data, and then I have a whole bunch of smaller tables. They have a very large number of records, but they don't really take up that much space, and it doesn't take too long to dump them. So what I do is I dump all the small tables about every six to 12 hours, and then I dump the one big table once a week. So I've, kind of, I've had to develop strategies like that. Also, another thing I do with backing up my RethinkDB install is that I uh, dump each table individually to a dir directory on a compressed BTRFS volume, so it doesn't take up a lot of space while dumping. And then I snapshot that um, by saving it using BUP. BUP is a backup system um, built on top of Git. So what I end up finally backing up is Git pack files. Every time, basically I get one Git pack file every time I make a dump of my database. And so that's something that I can easily store uh, in Google Cloud Storage and also offline on an external encrypted USB disk. So um, when you get a lot of, when you start getting millions of documents, you have to think pretty carefully about your backup strategies. So here's uh, a demo which will show SageMath Cloud, but I'll emphasize how certain functionality that I'm showing you uses RethinkDB behind the scenes, okay? So I have kind of a demo here running live from the website cloud.sagemath.com. This is my account where I have an enormous number of projects, about uh, 250. And I'll make a brand new project, RethinkDB Meetup. Create project. So I've now created a new project in SageMath Cloud. This is the SageMath Cloud um, project list. And I'll open that project. While I'm doing that, I'm going to open in a uh, different browser. Uh, SageMath Cloud. So now I'm connected um, as the same user, but via two different sessions. Now I'm just going to do something funny. So I really don't want people to know my full um, middle name. So I'm going to change it to William A. Stein. And notice, right when I made the change at the bottom, it changed at the top here. You might not have seen that, so let me change it back. So actually, that's my middle name after all. So notice it's changing between the two. What happens when I do this is um, there's, a, uh, there's sort of like a mini JSON database in the browser that represents all of my account settings. I make a change right there of my first name, and then it changes it locally, and then it gets synced back to a RethinkDB instance. And then a change feed fires, and it updates uh, that same little uh, table in the other browser, and then you see the change up there. And that basic idea of a list of JSON documents that you make changes to, and then it gets synced across everybody who's supposed to know about that list of JSON documents is how I've built up almost the entire system. It's just like on that one abstraction of a shared kind of mini um, database, which behind the scenes, RethinkDB is doing the pushing of the data around. Okay, so that's the first demo, changing my name. And I, though I like my middle name, I think I'll stick with the initial. Okay, the second thing I wanna show you is in this new project that I created. Um, so let's look at my list of projects. There's this new project, RethinkDB Meetup, at the top. And I'm just going to make some changes to it. So in the project settings, uh, how about if I capitalize this? And again, the moment I save it, everywhere that that project title appears, so it appears right there in that list. If I had the project open, there's the title in various places. It just gets synced immediately. And so you start to, um, by implementing things this way, where you have this kind of model of your data, which is sitting in RethinkDB, and every time something changes, it gets pushed out to all the clients. And then the rendering at the next step, it updates um, a Flux store in the sense of React, and then a whole bunch of React components. So you just feel like you're sort of looking at a model of some world out there, where in this case, you have your title, but it's really easy to program against this perspective. Um, okay, that's the second demo. The third thing I want to show you is creating, I'll just show you something involving SageMath Cloud. I'll make a Sage worksheet, um, a LaTeX document, just a few of the sorts of things you make using Sage. A terminal, a Jupyter Notebook, uh, a task list, etc. So uh, let's see, here's a LaTeX document. So you have a LaTeX editor, you can do things like um, I don't know, X cubed, um, which is kind of boring, and then it'll typeset it. You can do live calculations in the LaTeX document. 
So maybe you're worried about what the factorization of next year will be. That's not right. Sorry, I mistyped that. Sage. It's showing errors. Um, hey, ah, there it is. So next year, 2016 will be, this is way too small, two to the power of five, very nice healthy power of two, times three squared times seven. By the way, I'm a college professor and I'm a specialist in number theory. So I like factoring integers and stuff like that. Um, so let me show you a little more. There's a um, terminal, which should have appeared here. Okay, that's not good. All right, uh, well, let's switch back to Sage. So here you can also do various mathematics calculations. So same example of factoring an integer. Let's do something else, maybe a 3D. Actually, I'll do a 3D plot here. So you write Python code with some slight changes in a browser, and then you evaluate it, and you can see it over here. Um, it's synchronized, so if we go into the other copy of this project, open the same worksheet, and look at it, then we see exactly the same thing. Oh, that's not, okay, there, that just happened. But you can see how it's synchronized across the two. And likewise with uh, IPython notebooks, let's do something really simple, uh, et cetera. And I'm really annoyed that I don't see a terminal. Ah, there it is. Okay, so this is a terminal. You can do things like use VI, Emacs, whatever in here. Uh, okay, and I think that was everything I wanted to show you in the demo. Okay, so, um, uh, one of the main goals with using change feeds a lot in Sage Math Cloud, rather than say setting up something with a message queue and using a more traditional architecture is just to make development of the front end a lot easier. Um, so before, and also, uh, so I had implemented everything and then switched to RethinkDB partly because it supports uh, better functionality. Uh, but before I had set up a system where I had just a complicated list of API calls. So if I wanted to change the title of a project, you'd send a message to the back end, change the title of this project. And then the back end would see that message and try to decide whether you're allowed to. And I just had a huge number of functions that handled different types of messages. And I've replaced almost all of that with this really simple model of um, almost every action involves writing something to a table in RethinkDB, and then something else notices that it changed and updates in response to that. So I replace four or five different functions and a description of a message spec by write to a table. And then I have a nice um, declarative schema for specifying what the tables are that you can write to and what the permissions are for writing and reading as well. It's very much inspired by uh, Facebook's GraphQL, except um, you know, they're building things on top of MySQL and it's kind of a little bit more complicated. Uh, and I've tested this whole approach out quite a bit. I had several students working with me over the summer, and we, I mean, our, our ability to code new things and understand what we were doing and produce clean code that was readable and usable was much better. Uh, now, I'm, I'm almost done. I just want to say a little bit about what it's been like uh, using RethinkDB and g just give you a little data. Like, we have, we have um, lots of data that we've gathered as it's run in production. Uh, so, you know, what, what happens sometimes is you're, you get a bunch of traffic and the traffic just keeps going up and up and everything looks great, and then suddenly you hit this threshold. It's kind of like you have uh, a whole bunch of people, uh, like checkers at a counter, and then suddenly the line just keeps getting longer and longer and longer. And with a web application, it just means that it suddenly is completely broken for pretty much everybody. Like, there's just a certain point where that happens. And we've hit that with um, Sage Math Cloud on a couple of occasions. Um, like this morning. And in some cases, it's been a result of uh, RethinkDB being overwhelmed by all the queries. So I'm extremely happy with the benchmarks that Daniel um, posted, because this could literally mean that I can you know, like maybe significantly reduce the amount of compute that I'm throwing at uh, RethinkDB instances, which will save me money. Um, but this is just an example of what the plots look like when these sorts of things might happen. So maybe memory starts going up, more and more caching happens, um, et cetera. And then it gets really, really bad, and you have to possibly restart things, and then uh, maybe add another node. So I ended up just increasing the power of uh, my machines, and uh, now 
the bottlenecks are not in RethinkDB. Um, this is an example of just load over, uh, I guess, a couple of weeks. So, you know, just like any plot like this. Here's an example of things getting bad and then adding a new node and it starts to handle a lot of queries. Okay, so uh, that's all of my main presentation and um, definitely I'm leaving about three or four minutes at least for questions about how things work. There's a lot of really tricky, interesting details about how to come up with something like GraphQL that um, worked well for me, which I can talk more about or answer questions about, okay? Otherwise, please uh, try this out. Uh, it's free, but you can also pay. Yes? 